Welcome to the Glen Retreat. We're here in Glen, Michigan with the Alliance for Environmental Sustainability. The Alliance is a 501c3 nonprofit whose goal is to educate about green building practices. The Alliance for Environmental Sustainability is the Midwest premier LEED certification provider with over 1,300 units certified. So what is green building? Well, green homes take a comprehensive performance-based approach to design and construction by building homes that are built to last, energy efficient, attainable to anyone, and healthier for their occupants, making healthier people and creating environmental and economic benefits for everyone. This home behind me is a LEED Platinum home certified with the help of the Alliance and is owned by Barbara and Rich White. So what is LEED? LEED is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design and is a third party verification rating system for the greening of residential homes and was developed under the United States Green Building Council. So let's go on in and take a look. One of the most important aspects of green home design is energy efficiency. So how do we measure this? We do this through a HERS score. This LEED Platinum Home has a HERS score of 50. HERS is a home energy rating, which is basically a miles per gallon for your house. In addition, this house is 40% more efficient than Michigan Energy Code 2009 and 35% more efficient than Energy Star for home certification. So let's go inside the wall. Inside the framing of this wall, we have a three-part insulation system. On the inside, we have a spray cellulose insulation that is made out of recycled paper. This helps with heat retention and is four and a half inches thick. The next layer, we have one inch of agar-based closed cell spray foam, which helps with heat retention and air sealant. What this does for the house is provide structural benefits. We are located only 200 meters off the coast of Lake Michigan. And so the wind load on this house can be intense at times. This foam allows for rigidity and structural integrity to be maintained throughout the house as that wind load develops. Furthermore, we have that third layer of insulation, which is one inch of SIS Dow insulation. This helps eliminate thermal bridging, which is wood to air connections, which can result in heat loss. Two of the biggest features of heat loss in a home come from the attic and from the floor, where the floor has contact with the cold ground beneath. Two things we do to take care of these problems are install insulation in both the attic and the crawl space. In the crawl space below us, we have that same foam that we put in the wall. We have three inches of the agribase closed cell spray foam. And in the attic, we have a two-part system. We have four inches of the agribase closed cell spray foam, which air seals and reduces heat loss. And on top of that, we have an additional 10 inches of cellulose, which also adds to the reduction in heat loss. Another way we keep the house efficient is through the metal roof feature. On this house, we have a Galvalume unpainted metal roof that reflects 30% of sunlight during the summer, reducing heat that would otherwise enter the house through solar radiation. This type of roof is low maintenance and increases the durability of the house. I'm here with Eric Hughes of Image Design who designed this house and has designed over 15 other LEED certified homes within Michigan. Hi Eric, welcome. Thank you, Abigail. Um, passive solar basically means we design the home so the home sits on the lot facing south and the long axis of the home is east and west which allows natural sunlight to come in the home and we design the overhangs which are three foot to shade the home during the summer from the sun and during the winter and the winter solstice comes down and allows the sun to come into the home and heat the home during the winter. As you can see, the sun comes in and helps so we don't have to have artificial lighting during the day. There's a lot of natural light here in the home. On a lead house, there are calculations to ensure that the size of the heating and cooling systems and ducts are appropriate for the size of the house and all ducts are sealed to prevent air leakage. Used to heat and cool this house is a three-ton geothermal system. This system uses vertical loops that go 150 feet into the earth using a closed loop refrigerant that uses the earth's constant 55 degree temperature to maintain the temperature within the house. This system does not use natural gas, preventing off-gassing within the house, and the entire system is powered through electricity. 
The blower motor is an ECM motor, which is much more efficient than your average blower motor. And the house uses two on-demand efficient propane water heaters. One of the more aesthetically pleasing and practical features of the house is the indoor fireplace. This is EPA certified to guarantee that no indoor air quality issues arise from the burning of the wood within the home. So what's really neat about this wood stove, it's, it's very high energy efficient and its burning qualities are very efficient. Located above is a catalytic converter, which will actually burn whatever smoke is produced by the fire. And what that does is no smoke will leave the house. Everything gets burned within the system. And the only thing you see rising from the outside chimney is heat waves. The design component of the fireplace is structurally innovative because it can heat the entire house due to the open nature of the design of the house. What you have is a structure here of stone and concrete slab on top and a metal cylinder that will heat and retain that heat and actually radiate it throughout the entire house. So we have heat coming off of here and the top system and we also have vents located on either side of the system that will radiate the heat as well. Last on the list for energy efficiency is lighting. And in this home, we have Energy Star CFL lighting. In addition, we have Energy Star rated appliances, which include the refrigerator, dishwasher, washing machine, and the ceiling fans. One of the things about green building design is the concept of reduce, reduce before you produce. So in this house, we've reduced the energy needs of the house. And so the next step for us is to produce energy. One feature of the house is that it's pre-wired for solar panels so that in the future the house can become a zero energy home. The second important feature of a green building is indoor air quality and there are two strategies to take care of this. The way we tackle this is to prevent potential pollutants within the home. Featured within the house we have cabinetry that has no VOC paint and VOC stands for volatile organic compounds. Within the walls themselves and the trim, we have sealants in a paint that is low VOC. And as you can see on the floor itself, we have no carpet. This lowers the potential for pollutants since you have no off-gassing of the carpet. And the floor itself does not have a sealant, but has a wax finish. Outside the house, we have a detached garage. What this really does for the house is prevents off-gassing within the house with carbon monoxide and dioxides, improving the indoor air quality. In all of the bathrooms, we have non-paper face drywall, which reduces moisture retention, which can lead to mold production within the house. There's one saying in green building that says, build it tight, ventilate it right. And since we've built this house so tight, the next thing we have to tackle is ventilation. So the second strategy that's addressed within this house is ventilation techniques. And one of the first things that LEED addresses is kitchen ventilation. Here we have a kitchen range hood, which has a fan here that takes whatever off gases come from the burning of the natural gas within the kitchen and whatever moisture might be here and ventilates it to the outside. So we talked earlier about how there's ventilation within the kitchen and how all the bathrooms feature non-paper face drywall. Within the bathroom itself, we also have a ventilation system, which is more efficient than your normal ventilation system. This is Panasonic, and it's very, very quiet, very efficient, and it reduces the moisture within the room, lowering the opportunity for mold to develop and to pollutants increase. This house features a MERV 13 filter, which essentially is a much thicker filter, which captures dust, pollen, animal dander and bacteria as the heating and cooling system is running, maintaining clean air for the occupants. Our last strategy is including an ERV, or an energy recovery ventilator, which acts as the lungs of the house. This recovery ventilator exchanges the stale air for fresh air and maintains the temperature of the house without wasting heat. Another part of LEED's standards is mitigating radon, which can be the number one cause of lung cancer in the U.S. Therefore, this house has included a passive radon system, which mitigates radon rising from the ground by venting it through a pipe out of the roof. The next feature of a green building deals with water efficiency. Within this home, we take that very seriously, and there are different systems installed within the home to control water usage. The sinks themselves are EPA WaterSense certified low flow sinks. And the toilet and shower have different features as well. The toilets within the house have water efficiency savings. 
In comparison to your normal toilet, which uses 1.6 gallons per flush, these toilets only use 1.28. The showers within the home use 2.5 gallons per minute. So, less water equals less heat, which equals less energy. One of the categories for LEED certification is materials and resources, which was addressed in this house. The tile located both in the floor and walls of the shower is made out of 90% post-industrial recycled material. Before the construction of this home, the building site featured an old cottage that was beyond the repair. As the owner of this house toured that old cottage, he saw pieces that he wanted to integrate into the design of this home. So the owner went himself and reclaimed and refurbished that material. Here we have featured wood that was reclaimed from the cottage. This was the outside walling that has been turned inside out and featured in the entryway. Also in the master bathroom, we have a farmhouse sink and upstairs is a vanity that was taken from the cottage. Over here we have some other design features as well that implement local craftsmanship and talent. Behind me we have cabinetry made by a local craftsman that is formaldehyde free. Here we have a kitchen countertop that was produced locally in northern Michigan out of native maple hardwood. And behind me we have a countertop made out of aggregate local concrete designed specifically for this kitchen. And lastly over here we have a dining room table that was constructed out of leftover flooring material. To wrap up about the materials and resources design aspect of LEED certification, out here we have the driveway, which is a featured aspect of the house. This driveway is made by crushed concrete from a deconstructed local bridge that was processed by the homeowner's own company. Also within the house, all wood featured within the home is either FFC certified or guaranteed to be non-tropically sourced. Lastly, 93% of the waste generated on site during the construction of the home was diverted from landfill. Included is a lifetime design feature to this home, which features handicap accessible features such as this ramp, entry ramp leading up to the house, and a first floor that is designed for complete handicap access. That includes the bedroom, the bathroom, the living areas, and the kitchen. In addition, there are access paths completely around the house, allowing full access to any individual. The last social aspect of the house is probably the most pleasing. So stay tuned for part two, where we'll discuss the sustainable sites, the black water system, and the natural landscaping features of the house. The last social aspect of the house is probably the most pleasing, and that's the biophilia aspect of the house and the deep connection to nature, which allows for up to 72% reduction in water consumption on site when it comes to irrigation practices. And who better to have explain some of the practices happening right here than the homeowner himself, Rich White. Well, one of the uh, neat things with this a lot when I first saw it, uh, I, I realized the potential of it right away and uh, the interesting thing was that it has a high water table and many people would shy away from the site because it was so wet and I actually saw that as a positive. We ended up incorporating three water gardens and we also used a uh, septic drain field system as part of our uh, landscape design. Uh, some people refer to it as a black water landscaping system. Uh, one of the rain gardens, uh, one of the three that we have is uh, on uh, right behind me here. Uh, there's no water in it right now, but during a heavy rain, all three of them fill up. To have a, a properly designed rain garden, you only want the water to stay no more than 48 hours. The idea is to, to capture the, the water and then let it filter through the rest of your landscaping system. On the east and west sides of the property line, we have uh, bioswales, and the water gardens really uh, line up along those swales. They also make very good spaces for growing particular crops. So I have blueberries we planted this past summer. The uh, other parts of this landscape 
We are putting in native prairie grasses that covered a large part of our country and the local wildlife loves the habitat. So we let all this stand during the winter and then uh, early spring is when we'll mow it all down and, and let the cycle begin again. Uh, right now I'm standing in the rain garden that runs along the western property line. This is the largest of the three rain gardens and I planted eight blueberry shrubs in here. These are three to four year old shrubs and uh, I haven't got a crop off of them yet but we're expecting this coming summer to enjoy quite a few blueberries. This is also along the edge where we have our bioswale that uh, runs the entire length of the property line. We put in all these trees that you see here as well and the beauty of this system is we don't have to have any artificial irrigation system. We've also used runoff from the roof as the rain drops off of the roof in, into the perimeter around the house we are capturing the water uh, with the drain tile system and actually channeling it to the uh, underground to this rain garden and to the one on the east side. So we're not only capturing the natural runoff from the site, but anything that comes off the roof, it goes to the rain gardens as well. All the design features of the landscaping, such as low input and ultra effective irrigation systems, natural landscaping, really help protect this natural resource that is only 300 feet down the road from the house, clearly accessible and clearly appreciated. Living on the lake shore and the beauty of Lake Michigan is a lifestyle that green building really embraces. It makes it healthy for the occupants, healthy for the environment, and really just makes this collective culture of what Michigan is all about.